Hello grade 11s and welcome to this section of the curriculum on types of reactions. This is the first lesson in our series on reactions of acids and bases. Have you ever considered how we might classify reactions? Classification is a key scientific skill. This skill of sorting things with similar properties into groups is something that we all do or have seen other people do. Let us join Diasha as she looks at how objects can be sorted into different groups. Think what happens on washing days. The dirty clothes are all placed together in one container, but before the washing is done, the whites are separated from the colors and washed in different water. When the washing is dry, the clothes are folded and sorted again. This idea of sorting and packing things is used in schools too, particularly in libraries. Here you can see that books of the same sort are placed in categories together. Now, one of the most useful documents that chemists use is the periodic table. You have seen the periodic table in previous series of chemistry lessons. Remember, elements are sorted and arranged in groups. These are the vertical columns. On the left-hand side are the metals, and on the right-hand side, the non-metals. Just as we can classify washing and books and atoms, we can also classify into categories acids and bases. So let's review what you already know about acids and bases. There are many examples of acids and bases in our everyday lives. Substances such as coffee, tomato juice, and citrus fruit juices are acidic. Some of these acids are classified as weak acids and others are strong acids. Substances such as drain cleaners, soaps, and toothpaste are basic. And again, there is a range of strength from weak bases to strong bases. In addition to these common household acids and bases, there are acids found in the laboratory such as hydrochloric, nitric, and sulfuric acid. And laboratory bases such as sodium hydroxide and magnesium oxide. A simple way to test whether a liquid is an acid or a base is to use a chemical indicator like litmus paper. Red litmus paper turns blue in a base. Blue litmus paper turns red in an acid. If the litmus paper does not change color, then the solution is neutral. Pure water is an example of a neutral solution. Water is neither acidic nor basic. Here, we use both blue and red litmus paper to test two identical sets of samples of acids and bases. Diasha explains what we observed in this experiment. The blue paper turned pink, and this one changed from pink to blue. When litmus turns from blue to pink, like this group of substances, we call them acids. When litmus turns from pink to blue, like this group, we call them bases. Now notice in this solution here, the blue litmus remained blue, and the pink litmus remained pink. This means that this solution is neither an acid nor a base. We therefore say that it is neutral. Even before scientists use indicators, they were able to classify substances into these two groups based on their taste and feel. Now remember, we never taste chemicals in the laboratory, but food found in the kitchen is safe to test in this way. Let's do some taste testing. In your kitchens, you should be able to find some interesting stuff that you can use to conduct your testing experiment. Here are a few good examples. A glass of water, some lemon juice, vinegar, bicarbonate of soda, and washing powder. Now, it's important to draw up a table to record your results and use only a small sample of about half a teaspoon. Remember to rinse your mouth out with water after each test. Which substances tasted sharp and sour? That's right. Lemon juice. And vinegar. And which substances tasted better? 
bicarb and soap. Notice that water was not sour or bitter. The sharp tasting substances are acids and the bitter substances are bases. Water is a neutral substance. We can also use the feel of substances to decide if they are acids or bases. Bases have a very soapy or slimy feel, but acids don't. In grade nine, we studied the concept of pH and how it helps us to determine whether a substance is an acid or a base. The pH scale ranges from zero to 14. Acids have a pH lower than seven and bases have a pH higher than seven. Neutral substances are neither acids nor bases and they have a neutral pH of seven. We also studied the reactions of acids with bases. This process of reacting an acid with a base is known as neutralization and a neutralization reaction results in a change in the pH of a solution. An example of a neutralization reaction is the addition of acids to a swimming pool when it turns green. One of the reasons that the pool water turns green is because the pH of the water is too high, meaning that it is too basic. Tiny green algae love to grow in basic conditions. When we add acid, the result is that we lower the pH of the water closer to a pH of 7. This pH level causes the algae to die and the pool turns blue again. Previously, when we studied some reactions of acids and bases, we formed some general equations such as the reaction of an acid plus a metal oxide forms a salt and water. The reaction of an acid plus a metal hydroxide forms a salt and water. The reaction of an acid plus a carbonate forms a salt and water and carbon dioxide. The reaction of an acid plus a metal forms a salt and hydrogen. Later, we will look at each of these type of reactions again. Another aspect that we touched on in grade 10 was the fact that in an acid-base reaction, there is a transfer of protons. Protons are H plus ions. We will have a look at all these chemical reactions and the transfer of protons in more detail. So, please join us for the rest of the series. Until then, goodbye.